Okay, so today's tutorial is going to show you how to make a fruit drop game. And so first off, I went and did File New. I've got my new application here, and I've got a couple other ones that I just created as practice that are there. Uh, so I'm going to go into Frame 1. I'm going to go into Games down here under the Local Library. And I'm going to go into Shoot 'em Up Space Game. And I'm just going to take this backdrop here. There's a bunch of different backdrops you can use, or you can use your own images. Uh, make sure that if you are to borrow backgrounds, that you uh, cite your sources and don't don't plagiarize. Oop. How did that come down here? Is that going to go down there again? Ooh, there it is. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Let's see if this background fits in there. I made it oversized so that these uh, buttons along the top don't show. Okay, so I've got my background set up. Now I'm going to go into um, shoot 'em spacecraft here. Bring out the blessed killer set them in there and I'm also going to bring out of game objects three balls let's drag them right over here and I'm going to leave them off in this gray space okay so those are set up uh, and I'm also going to grab a, a bat so let's see here let's use bat f how about bat three they'll have higher contrast they'll show up a little bit better it's got a nice little face on it okay so Got my uh, basic game object set up here. Again, I put these off on the side for a reason. Let's go ahead and animate the blessed killer first. So I'm going to select it. Uh, actually, I'm going to right click on my background first and just lock that so it doesn't interfere. So I'm going to select my blessed killer, go to movement, go to static, and set it to path. Now, if I edit the path, I can choose this tape mouse, and it's going to like tape like it's recording my mouse. I'm going to drag out here. I'm just going to make a nice little path for it to move in. Let's give it one little dip down here and make it a little bit erratic. There we go. And now I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to loop the movement and I'm also going to select reverse at end and I'm going to leave the speed. So I'm going to hit OK. And now if I hit F7, you see it moves around, follows the path lovely. Okay, so now I want to uh, make it so that it starts launching these here. So I'm going to go back to my event editor, go to new condition, and go to this clock. Right click on that and go to every. I'm going to hit OK. Actually, let's set it to three seconds. Every three seconds, something's going to happen. And if I go under this little cube here for create new objects, I'm going to right click, go to create object. I'm going to have it create this ball. I'm going to have click OK. And I'm going to have it go relative to the spaceship. So hit OK. So now it's relative to spaceship. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to do F7. Every three seconds it's going to create a ball. But now you can see that ball just sits there. So it does us no good. So we're going to go back to our frame editor. And with these off to the side here, I'm going to click on the ball. Make sure movement is selected. And go to static set it to pinball movement and I'm gonna set initial direction I'm gonna clear this out and have it go down and maybe a little sideways and now let's see what happens uh, wait three seconds and the ball falls and it's got a nice kinda like gravity effect to it from that pinball movement okay so I'm gonna do the same thing to this ball uh, I'm going to go from static to pinball movement clear out the initial direction, have it go somewhere down around like this. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to go from static, set that to pinball movement. And I'm going to have the initial direction really, really wide, make it a little bit tricky, because I'm going to end up making this one worth like a lot of points. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to make this one, the initial speed, triple that of the others, make it 150. So it's going to be a little more difficult to catch. So now I gotta go back to my event editor. I'm gonna make another every condition, so new, right click here, every. And this will be every two seconds. We're gonna go to create object. We're gonna create ball two. Hit okay. Okay, relative to the spaceship, and I'm going kind of quick now because this is review. I'm gonna hit okay. So now, let's see. Okay, so every two seconds that thing falls, every three seconds that thing falls. You also saw this stray ball over here. That's because those balls just sort of exist out on the side there, and we're going to get rid of those. Uh, new condition, every, and every, we'll do every seven seconds, 
create an object, we'll have ball three come out. And ball three is really fast, and it's going to be, again, worth a lot of points. So, again, relative to, got to make it so it comes out of the spaceship, not just appearing in the middle of the screen. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and watch this. Okay, every two seconds that happens, every three seconds that happens. Just dropping balls, there we go, and... Oh yeah, I think that other one went out really quick, so it was too fast to see, but there it goes, yep. So, now they're going off the edge of the screen, so what I need to do is i got to do a uh, new condition. I'm going to choose it on this ball. Let's go to collision, or I'm sorry, test position, under position, test position of ball one. Leaves it on the left, leaves on the right. If that happens, we're going to go under that same ball in that column here, and we're going to go to movement bounce. And let's do the same thing for this ball. Test position, ball two on the left, on the right. Okay, again, I'm going fast. Drag out that bounce command. I'm just going to go fast since this is something I did slowly already. Right click, position, test position. If it leaves on the left, if it leaves on the right, hit OK. Copy out bounce. And let's just test it real quick, see if those balls do indeed bounce off the wall rather than just fly away. And we got to, up oh, there it goes. Yep, had to wait for that wide angle one. Okay, so we've got that all set up pretty well. We're in pretty good shape here. Now let's go ahead and uh, give some motion to the bat. So I'm going to go back to my frame editor, click on my bat, and go to movement. Set it from static to eight directions. And for the directions, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to make it cleared, and then left, and right. So I can only go left or right. And uh, let's see here. Let's also go back to our event editor, give it a new condition, and let's test for position, do the exact same thing we did for the ball, so that when we get to the edge, it doesn't escape. So let's just copy out, bounce. And let's go ahead, F7, test the frame. I can move left. When I hit the edge, it bounces. When I hit the right, it bounces. I'm in good shape. Okay, now the balls are just falling through the bat. So we got to do new condition. Uh, let's do it on the ball. Do collision with another object. Choose the bat. Let's hit OK. And when it collides with that, we're going to go and we are going to go under here. Uh, wait a second. It's under the joystick. Let's go to score. Add to score. And let's just have that one worth one point. Okay. Uh, and let's also do, uh, if we right click on under here, under the same objects column, we can go to destroy. So it'll disappear. So now let's repeat that for the next balls. Right click here. Collision, another object, choose the bat, OK. And I'm just going to copy, add to score. That one's also worth one, and it's also going to destroy it. And let's do a new condition on this third ball. Right click, uh, collision, another object, choose the bat, hit OK. OK, now it is going to not, let's not copy that, because it's going to add to the score, score, add to score. And let's make this one worth five points, because it's so fast. It's difficult to catch. So we'll make it more rewarding. And we'll also go to destroy it. So now, uh, let's go back to our frame view. And if I go over here and right click, I can go to insert object. And uh, I'm already on games, but you want to scroll down until you see games here. And choose score, and hit OK. And now I'm just going to click with this plus sign right here. And it's sort of hard to see, but you can see my scores there. Not the best for this background. You could also add like a little white box behind it to make it stand out a little bit better. But uh, let's go ahead and test it with F7. Moving back and forth. Let's see if I can catch a ball. The ball disappears, and it's adding to my score. And let's see if I can catch that really fast one. Ah, I can't. But you can see that these are each adding one to my score. And we're getting to the point where this is becoming a playable game. Ooh, it looks like I might have caught that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to make it so that there is a, another level. Um, and of course, when when you're working on this game and you're making your final game, go ahead and add sound effects for when you catch the ball. Make up your own sound effects. Uh, use the Foley techniques that we used in previous lessons. Um, uh, 
and you can add some background music as well. Um, okay, so the next thing I need to do is let's make another level. Okay, so the way to make another level with this is I'm going to go over to my frame here. Actually, first let's save. I'll save as Fruit Drop Tutorial. Toot. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go over here to this frame. I'm going to right click on the frame and I'm going to copy the frame. Then I'm going to right click on the program here that we created and I'm going to do Paste Frame. And I'm going to call this, if I right click and rename it, uh, oh, it had me in there. Yeah, rename. There we go. Uh, okay, I'm going to rename this frame 2 or level 2, anything like that's fine. Okay, so now level 2 is the exact same as level 1 right now. Uh, in order to make it look a little bit different, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to uh, take the background. And, ah, let's see here. Let's go to my background. And I want to edit it. And let's just do something to make it look a little bit different. So we know it's on level two. Okay, so do a big circle on it. Okay, you're probably gonna wanna have totally different backgrounds for your different levels, but uh, for the expedience sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do that. You also might wanna have it say like level two. Uh, or you can have a screen actually pop up saying you beat level one, now here comes level two or something like that. Uh, but essentially, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my bless killer. I'm gonna go to the movement. I'm going to add the path, and I'm going to create a different path, or I'm going to add to the path that exists, and I'm going to make it more complicated. Okay, and I'm going to take the speed, and I'm going to escalate the speed a little bit, so again, it becomes more difficult, right? Uh, now, I'm also going to go to my bat, and I'm going to go to my speed of my bat, and I'm going to make my bat a little bit faster. Okay, that's going to make it also maybe a little bit more difficult, at least more intense. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to the balls here, and I'm going to set the initial speed of these up a little bit as well. Set that up a little bit more, that one up a little bit more, and this one's already very fast, but let's make it very very fast. Okay, and now if I'm to test this, oops, get that out of here. If I'm going to test this, you can see the spaceship's moving faster, the balls are falling faster. Um, and my paddle is moving faster, and I've got this uh, white outline. Okay, so now what I want to do in order to make the game advance is I'm going to go back to frame one, go into my event editor, and actually, if you, this is a, a good point over here. If you click on this here for frame one, it doesn't actually bring you back to frame one. If you double click on it, it may or may not. You got to make sure that you've got frame one up here selected. Okay, so I'm going to go to my event editor. I'm going to make a new condition. And I'm going to make the condition happen every, and I'm going to say every 20 seconds. Okay, uh, every 21 seconds, sure. Uh, and I'm going to go to the little chessboard here. I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to say next frame. So after 20 seconds, it's going to automatically jump me to the next frame. Now I'm running short on time for the demo, uh, so I'm going to just you're going to have to take my word for it that this does work. But then uh, I'm going to go to frame 2. I'm going to do the exact same thing. New condition. Every. And let's say that this level also takes, you know, 21 seconds. And then uh, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to jump to frame. And I'll have a jump to frame. Uh, actually, I'm going to make a, a, a new frame that's going to be like the uh, high score frame. So I'll do new frame. I score, uh, go in here in the frame editor and hit right click, insert object, make sure games is selected and you choose high score and you put a high score in there. Now you can make this have like a nice background as well, which I suggest you do, um, but this will allow you to log your high scores. Um, and now let's go back to frame two. Oops, got to do it up here go to my event editor and every 21 seconds now this frame is going to jump to the frame or essentially the next frame over here is the high score okay so we're in pretty good shape uh, this is going to be the end of part one I'm going to show you uh, part two briefly where we'll show how to have it so you have lives and how you lose lives and you can potentially lose the game as well and we'll get that set up in just a minute okay thanks for watching